Good morning. Welcome to Planet Mojo. Today I'm going to be rewiring the Ferguson TO20 to accommodate the 12 volt system required for the alternator. I'm going to use THNN, the type of wire you generally get at a big box store, because it's the only stuff I have. I'm going to match the diagram I have. See, I started with this diagram here. This is this came with the alternator kit, and then I modified it to allow for this, the Pertronics igniter. And I mapped out the old system, and this is from the owner's manual, which is not much of a help. This is what the old system was. I mapped that out yesterday. And I came up with this. The only difference from the way I had it before was that the positive from the battery needs to go to the starter switch. I didn't have that on there before, but everything else should be okay, but we'll see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute, wherever it says 16 wire, I'm going to substitute that for 14, which is a one gauge up, or one gauge thicker. Um, 10, I will use 10. I have 10 wire. And... The, these heavy wires I have those are the battery those are the battery wires so that's really about it wherever it says 16 I'm gonna use 14 and I thought there was some 12 in here but maybe not then I'm gonna use what I have on hand I have you know a bunch of different wire the problem with it is that the type of wire I have that's made for being in a conduit like this is not oil and gas resistant and I don't believe it has much UV resistance either. This stuff is exposed to sunlight and it's exposed to you know everything because these are generally left outdoors but they're they're used outdoors as well so I will have to replace that. I mean, it's just a little bit of wire. There's not much length going here. The only thing I will lose is a little bit of time, but that's fine. So I'm going to use this uh, stuff you get at Menards and wire it up and get it working. I mean, the stuff, the wire I'm putting on here would probably have three, four years of use in it, but I will replace it whenever I can. I got to get some spools of like marine wire, which is uh, silicone jacketed or something similar. It, it's really hard to find online. Uh, maybe if I just go to an, an automotive place, I can find it, but I was having a hell of a time finding it. I couldn't find anything on Amazon that wasn't cheap Chinese stuff that's aluminum wire uh, copper cladded aluminum CCA wire which I do not want I actually have some of that I made the mistake of buying on Amazon and I do have some of the crappy CCA wire which I don't know what the hell I'll do with it you know I, I bought it because it said primary wire and I didn't read uh, in depth to find out that it was CCA just junk made in China. I'm, I mean, I imagine they make the junk here too, but almost everything I've seen is coming from China. Okay, so I gotta go grab a 14 gauge, maybe 12 gauge, and quite, there's quite a bit of 10 gauge. And hopefully I have all of the ends, I believe I do. I'll take a quick look here. My nephew is doing some work in here, and I don't know how much he used. Oh, I got plenty. 
Hopefully it's the right size. Yeah, I think the yellow stuff is for 10. More in here. So I think I have everything I need. So I'm going to do as good of a job, you know, a decent job and everything nice and soldered or crimped or whatever, but knowing that the wire will not last forever in the outdoor environment. And I need a few spools of that stuff in here for working on tractors. So, you know, I'll probably get a couple rolls of a couple different colors and a couple different, uh, gauges for working on tractors and cars and whatnot. Okay, let's get started. Okay, in stock, this is 10. It should be stranded as I pull this stuff. Yes, it is. So I got some 10 here. I got some white and blue. I'll grab both so I can differentiate. And what else do I need? I would like all stranded. I'll just put this down. I think this is 10 as well. Nope, that's 12. I may just use that. That's solid. Don't want to use solid because it's, you know, it's kind of hard to bend, so. I'll, I think I'll just use, I mean, these are both 12, so I think I'll use 12. Yeah, I'll just use 12 for the lighter gauge and blue 10, white 10, and these two for different circuits. Okay, that's plan. Okay, I forgot all about this. The first kit they sent me had a damaged, uh, badly damaged wire. It was crimped, like right in the middle of the wire somewhere. But this came with the kit, and it appears to be copper wire. I'll take a, a better look at it, but yeah, it does appear to be copper wire and the right sizes. Hopefully it's the right length, but it has all the ends and stuff on it. So it looks like this is going to be easier than I thought. I forgot all about this. Yeah, I need to dig through here and see. I was coming to see if I had a new ammeter because the one that's in there is uh, a 6060. And I think this is, yeah, this is the a running light. So I got a set of lights and stuff too, and some brackets. And I got these on closeout on eBay, I believe. Real nice uh, seven millimeter. Uh, these, these are silicone jacketed, which is what I want for the other. The other wires but I'm gonna use these and they might be good wires to start with okay we got a resistor this came with the kit as well so it'll take me a couple minutes I got to get these on there I'm gonna go through this kit and pull out all the parts that I bought I have the original type key which is pretty awesome once you stick the key into the ignition, it's just like an old Bakelite knob. And this is the original style with the little fork. So I'm going to replace the ignition switch as well. So let, let me dig through this and I'll pull out the stuff that I need. Like I need this igniter and coil and I get it all over there and start putting it together. I'm going over my instructions, installation instructions for this 12 volt conversion kit. And they're pretty funny. 
you know, and disconnect the battery cables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, remove the generator, voltage regulator, all mounting brackets, and the wiring that connects the components shown on this page. Um, yeah, that, the, once I started getting into this, it just took forever because I had to take off the whole front end just to get at the brackets there. You know, it's, it sounds real simple on here, but a little harder in real life. Next, the alternator can be installed, install and tighten the belt, and all mounting hardware. Yeah, easier said than done. Okay, but now we're up to my part, the part I'm doing today. The wiring harness can now be installed. Notice the routing diagram to the right of this page. All this stuff above and to the right. And that's it. Next, install 12 volt battery. It must be installed as negative ground. Okay, and then check to see if there is power to the battery terminal on the back of the alternator. This should be hot all the time. Well, that's helpful. Now start the tractor. Okay, well, that's jumping ahead a little bit. So it, the instructions just say to put all the stuff on. So that's what I'm going to do. The thing I was looking for was to see if I got a new alternator, and I must have or an ammeter, and I must have been fine with this one. I'm trying to remember, because this is a 6060, which is what it needs. I don't know if it's wired correctly or not. It should have a plus and a minus on the back there. But I believe I've been reading so damn much on this, and you know, it's kind of hard to remember everything, but... I believe you have to reverse the way it's, the connections are on the ammeter. But what I'm going to do is just, I'll pull it out and see what it says on the back and everything and see if I can make head nor tails on it. If it's wired up backwards, what it's going to do is, is read backwards. I think that's the only damage it can cause. So if it's reading negative all the time, you know, that that could be a good sign. Uh, and then I would just have to reverse it. So it would help to know which terminal is which. So hopefully I can see that. All right, let's get started. And yeah, it looks like the ammeter, this, this is the furthest from where I'm going to be sitting. So I'll start with that. Okay, the ammeter was not marked. There is no marks on here whatsoever. But this right hand side right here went to the ignition switch. And on my drawing, it shows that the positive from the ammeter goes to the ignition switch. So this was working. So I'm guessing that this is the positive. So I'll pop that back in, and it tells me that the red wire goes to the ignition switch, which there's several of them, so it will be the shortest one that makes it there. And I need to pull out the ignition switch and match it up against the one I just got. Okay, this one is marked AMM for ammeter, and this replacement one has a marking, it has L, I, and B, which I believe 
is lights, ignition, and battery. So the ammeter one would need to go to the battery. And then lights is, lights would be this one, this black one that went nowhere. And ignition goes to the coil. And let's see if my directions say that. I got one going to the battery. Uh, yeah, this is a bit different. One going to the coil, one going to the battery, and one going to the ammeter. It has none going to lights. Hmm. Okay, this went to the ammeter, and it says ammeter on there. This one goes to the coil. And, and it says coil on there. Well, this one's definitely more reassuring than the new one I got. Which is supposed to be uh, like a genuine equipment replacement. Oh, lost the screw. Hopefully I don't need it. And this says accessory, which is the same as lights. So, where's my new one? We have lights, ignition, and, well, it's a B for battery. So I guess it gets its juice. See this wire right here? at the starter this this will be a positive goes to this side of the starter switch and then we have juice coming into it from here from the voltage regulator that will go away because the voltage regulator goes away so it needs a wire going from here to the switch Or through the ammeter to the switch. Okay, let's pull some stuff off. Okay, this is actually a harness. So this long one goes goes to the This one goes to the alternator. Here's my diagram. I'm trying to figure out. It's got two red wires here and it says, uh, okay, so this big one, it's just hard to tell which one goes to which. This big one here goes to this terminal here replaces that one. So that will go on here and that one, and it doesn't quite fit. Ah, just never ends with this stuff. Hopefully I can drill that out. So I will have to, I don't know why the hell they don't have them. It just says red, and then they put two reds going through this harness here. There's no nothing to uh, mark them different. So I'm going to have to uh, test this and see which one is which, and then mark them, and then... Uh, this one goes up to the ammeter. 
in this kit, it is this wire here that is going to go from the back of the positive. I marked the positive. It's going to go from the back of the positive down to the terminal on here that's marked B, which is this one right here. Then, as I figured out before, on that same terminal is one of these two. And this is the other end of it. So I got to trace where that is. And so it has actually, it has one coming down to the ignition switch. Oh, red and white wire. We have one coming from, I don't know why they have, well, the way they have this marked, maybe there is no positive on a ammeter, but both of these are on one side, the one going to the ignition switch and the one going to the alternator. So the long one and this one both go to that same terminal. And then on the opposite terminal, that's the one that goes down to the starter switch. So I'll just wire it up that way. And if, if the ammeter is running backwards, then I got them on the wrong side, I'll switch them to the other side. So that's my plan. I just got to test this and find out which is which on these red. Two problems. This starter switch, ignition switch, I don't know, even know if that's metal. It, it kind of seems like that uh, when you built models when you were a kid, the chrome plated plastic. It's pretty cheap. And it doesn't fit the hole. I would have to go get. I would have to make some kind of a washer setup to make that work. So I might just get rid of this. I really liked the keys on this, but damn it. This original one, 
I don't know where the damn key is for it. I don't know why the hell it wouldn't be in there. You know, other than kids walking around in here, we have kids uh, wandering around in here once in a while, and, you know, they would pull it out. But other than that, I don't know who the heck would pull it out of there, unless I did, and I hid it somewhere for safekeeping, which I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt. So, if I can't find the key, for right now I can use this, you know, just to test the system. Um, so, that's going to be fine for now. What we have here, going to the ignition, we have this brown wire going to the resistor. And then, the other end goes into the loom and out here and would connect to the coil on my coil instructions three ohm coils uh four and six cylinder for normal applications remove the resistor i'm gonna have to go with their instructions on it and get rid of the resistor but that makes my wires too short so I'll just, I'll have to make a new wire for that. And i got to mount my, this is a flamethrower. It's a 3 ohm, so this is where I'm reading from. And I know, I can't remember. I did the, uh, I did the research on this last year. So I might have to look at that again. But I'm going to mount this today. I will be getting rid of this and I'll just, I'll run a wire. Oh, actually that goes into the loom. So what do I need? Oh, I can just uh, put this. Okay. I just need a, uh, a eye with a tab on it. I think they make them. I can probably get one of those at the hardware store. Otherwise this is kind of short. I don't know if, or I can just get, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't want to do a half-assed job on it, but I can, I can just splice the damn wire if I wanted to. I'll figure that out. But I am quickly running out of time with all, you know, enlarging these holes and everything and tracking down all my tools to get the job started. It's just taken forever. So the next thing I'm going to do is get the coil installed and then I'll see how much time I have left. Okay, good news. The key for that ignition is on my keychain. Yeah, I'm always worried about kids, you know, if they see a, a key in an ignition like that, They'll either turn it on or they'll pull the key out and, and take it. And we have kids running around once in a while. So I did the right thing. It's on here. So I'm going to put this back in tomorrow. I'm going to take the voltage regulator out. I'm going to take the air cleaner off and get the ground cable on. And then that'll probably wrap up tomorrow. Oh, I have, I have to make a jumper for this. This needs to be taken out of the loop. Then I'm guessing it'll go into the next day to uh, put the electronic ignition in and get the coil wired up. So tomorrow is a bunch of tear out and some rewiring of the switch. So if you want to see that stuff, make sure you're subscribed and click on the update icon so you're notified when I post the new videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.